All right, uh, Jim Adams here. I'm going to show you how to do a place a Foley catheter. Now, on all your checkoffs, you've got to remember the simplest things can make you fail. Because I can say one thing during the checkoff, and if you make it, uh, well, you forgot to introduce yourself, you forgot to check the order. Well, then when it gets down to something later on that you might miss or forget, didn't pass. So make sure you get those first simple things done so you don't miss something easy. So I'm going to check my doctor's order to see that I have a Foley catheter order. Place Foley catheter. Come to the patient's room. I'm going to do my little hand sanitizer or wash my hands before I go in. I'm going to introduce myself to the patient. Hi, I'm Jim Adams. I'm here. Uh, I'm your nurse. I'm here to place a Foley catheter. Doctor wrote for an order. I'm going to check a wristband, make sure it's the right patient. I'm going to provide adequate lighting. And I'm going to provide for patient privacy. I'm going to get my equipment. And I'm going to raise the bed up to an adequate working height. I'm left-handed. If you're left-handed and you're new at this, you want to be on the left side because you want to be controlling the catheter with your dominant hand. I've done this for 20 years, so I better be able to do this with either hand. With practice, you get to be ambidextrous. Now, um, we may ask you to explain how you're going to insert a Foley catheter in a male, but let's face it, it's more difficult inserting a Foley catheter in a female. That's why we're using female gender mannequins. Uh, with a male, if they uh, are uncircumcised, you have to re retract the foreskin, clean the meatus, insert your catheter. Um, when you're done, you have to be certain that you replace the foreskin or there will be big problems a few hours down the line. So we are going to place this Foley catheter on this woman patient. So I am going to get my catheter kit. I'm allergic to the latex gloves, so I always have my uh, non-latex gloves. I always carry a spare set in my back pocket because sometimes I will mess up. I'll put a glove on wrong. Uh, I might touch something on accident. Uh, people can uh, have their hospital stays increased if they have a urosepsis from an improperly placed Foley catheter. Sterile field is the main thing. That's why when you come check off, you better pull your hair back because if you're brushing a wisp away, there's going to be problems. So uh, try to be as if you're try to try to to present yourself here as if you're coming to a clinical because you don't want any distractions to mess you up. So saying all that, we're going to get started. All right, ma'am, we're going to place the Foley catheter. So I'm going to pull the lens back and I'm going to prepare the patient in the proper positioning here. Get my kit. Now we are preparing a sterile field, so I'm going to open the kit. I'm going to use this section. my trash can. Some places you might have a big trash can in the room. Uh, our trash cans you have to hit a little foot lever to open it. Very inconvenient. This is just much easier to use. So I'm going to pull this around to I think 
like it better down here. I'm going to set my trash can right here. Okay, now we're ready to begin. So I have my kit. My hands are dirty. I cannot touch anything in the kit or if I'm messing up my sterile field. An inch around your kit. So what I'm going to do is get my special gloves and I'm going to put on my gloves. We're going to be watching you put on your sterile gloves so if you mess it up, you can fail your check off by not putting on your gloves properly. If you do contaminate your gloves, simply say, oh, I did that improperly. I'm going to have to get a new set of gloves. There's a shiny side and a material side. Shiny side down. Now I have on sterile gloves. So I don't want my hands to touch anything or they'll be contaminated. My patient can lift themselves up, so I'm going to have them lift up, I'm going to tuck this under, pull out, not touching anything. If I did accidentally touch something, I would have to get my second pair of gloves. Now these are the ones I'm allergic to, so I'm going to just discard those. This is a little drape that you could use. Generally we don't. I'm just going to just so you can see it in use. Now, I'm opening the kit and moving things around. This inner part is sterile. I'm touching a sterile field with my sterile glove. Now, I was always taught that you have to check your balloon. Nowadays, a lot of places are saying you don't have to check the balloon, but since I'm old school, I'm going to check, I'm going to check my balloon. Now, if you do drop something or mess something up on your catheter, you can say, oh, that touched the bed. I'm going to have to get a new kit. And you would, and that's what you've got to do. But I always tell people, be cognizant you just burnt a couple hundred bucks of the patient's money because you messed up. So you always want to try to be as careful as you can. So I'm going to continue on. But like I said, if you make a mistake, just say, hey, that was wrong, and I can't do it that way. I'm going to have to, and we'll just say, okay, good. Because uh, you can make a mistake, everybody does. Just don't continue on and give them a big raging infection that could kill them or kill their kidneys. So I am going to set this back in here. I have my lubricant. This is the Sim Lab, so we're just going to say, open my lubricant, and I'm going to spray it in this little container here. I'm going to lubricate the tip of my catheter. I'm just going to set it back in here. I might get some lubricant on something, but that's okay. It's all sterile in that box, and I know it's going to be safe. Some people want to lay it out here, and that's fine and dandy, but you know, sometimes it can move around, and I just don't, I just, I think it's safer being in the box. But it's however you want to do it, however you feel best at doing this. Okay. Rip this open. This is my uh, Provodyne iodine pack. You should also ask the patient. Are you allergic to iodine or shellfish? Because then you couldn't use this. You'd have to get some other type of a of a, an antiseptic. Okay. So I'm going to dab my alcohol uh, or my pro, uh, iodine. I'm going to dab my cotton balls around in the iodine. Now I'm going to spread the labia 
and I'm going to wipe down one side. Notice how I'm not pulling this over my sterile field. I'm wiping and then I'm trying to come around keeping out of my sterile field. Other side. I've got three more I see. Enter. The other side, enter. With my last cotton ball right down the middle. So now I cannot let go with my left hand, which is holding, separating. I'm going to do all this with my right hand. Now on the mannequin, this is just a mannequin. Um, you see the, the labia, there's the clitoris, the urinary matus, the vagina. Now this is, from the distance, you probably can't see it, but this is hard plastic. This will not go down into the meatus on the mannequin. So what we're going to do is just put it in the vagina and simulate it. This is the sim lab. Now, if you are really inserting a Foley catheter and you insert it and you do not get urine back, and you think, well, I'm probably in the vagina. Just leave it, get a new catheter, and go again, you won't hit the same spot. And then you have a better chance of hitting the meatus the second time. So anyway, so we're going to simulate inserting this into the urethra. And I'm going to tell the patient how you're going to feel some pressure. Take a deep breath in and blow it out. And I'm going to insert. And it should insert nice and easily going to insert it until I see urine and when the urine starts flowing down the tube I'm going to insert it eh, maybe an inch farther to make sure we're up into the bladder then I'm going to grab it hold it and we'll start inserting the balloon and once the balloon is full I'm going to disconnect any discomfort the patient should not be feeling any at this time then I'm going to, at the facility I work at, we have a thing called, uh, a, thing called a Statlock Foley. It tapes to their leg and then it has a little section that clamps onto the Y. Uh, other places I've worked, we've had to just put tape on it. So whatever your facility uses, secure to the leg. They can reposition their leg, legs down now. I would take the Foley bag. It's going to be a Foley catheter to gravity drainage. So I'm going to want to hook this to the side of the bed. You don't want it, you don't want it on a rail because if it's on a rail when it goes up and down, it can pull the, the catheter. So the catheter is in. This, you just rip it right off. Gather my supplies. Toss all this into the trash. I can also put on my non-sterile gloves now and wipe the patient off because there may be some betadine, or there will be some betadine on them still. Discard that linen saver. And then position them for comfort. I'm going to give them their call light. Let's say if you have any uh, problems, give me a call. I'm going to set the bed down to a, to a safer height because I have to have them up in the sky.